in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Break every wall down. Break every limitation in my life down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Break every wall down in the name of Jesus. Outside, are you praying? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we are gathered before you tonight. We are here because we believe in you. We are here because we trust you. We are here because we want to know you. We are here because you are our helper. This is the place of strength. This is the place of wisdom. This is the place of power. This is the place of miracles. This is the place of encounters. This is a place of transformation. So Lord, we thank you. For you are bigger than what we say. You are better than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. Hallelujah. Bless our hearts tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Walk to 10 people, greet them, tell them it's good to see you. And then back to your seat. There is a sweet anointing in There is a still in the atmosphere Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary, God is here. That's already a prophetic word for someone tonight. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. For in the sanctuary. For in the 
sanctuary. God, is here. God, you are here, and we thank you. Change our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have a very serious word for us tonight. It's, it's actually an explanation. We are to start a new series, but the Spirit of God would not let me start a new series. There is a key that I taught in this place that the Lord wants me to teach it again because we need to understand it. Again and again, the Holy Spirit kept pressing on my spirit that we ought to understand some mysteries must be taught again and again and again until our spirits pick them are we together the end of revelation is that we apply these truths and they produce results in our lives and so i'm going to be challenging us on that thought and then we will pray One of the greatest prayers you can pray as a believer is that the eyes of your understanding truly be enlightened. Are we together? The eyes of your understanding is not intelligence. The eyes of your understanding is not intellect. The eyes of your understanding is not philosophical knowledge. The eyes of your understanding is access to the mysteries of the spirit alongside their operation you can know that these mysteries exist you see revelation is not knowing what god has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life knowing what god has said is not revelation when you know how to make it work in your life he told job nowhere thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth amen it's important that when we come into God's presence, we listen. You will think that when people come into God's presence like this, the fact that you are looking at me, it doesn't mean you are listening. Are we together? People can be distracted. People can be careless. Some can be looking with their eyes open, but they are sleeping. Are we together? All kinds of things happen it was Jesus himself that told us what happened to seeds. Some fall by the wayside. Correct seed, correct sower. Some fall by the wayside. Some fall in the midst of thorns. Some fall on a rocky ground. Even among the good soils, three kinds of results. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. May you be a 100-fold tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. A day will come in your life where you would have sufficiently gained access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the keys that release their power. And let me tell you, when that time comes, you will be nothing short of a wonder. Everybody around you will know that the finger of God is upon your life. We make impact in this world through mysteries. We make impact in this world not through desire. It takes more than desire to make true impact for the kingdom. I'll share a thought with us and then we'll walk on a scripture and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I shared with us here, for those of us who were not here, please listen attentively. And by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms. As revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact platform number one encounters don't forget this they are not cheap 
they are not basic at all encounters the first platform that grants a man access to walk with god is encounter everybody say encounter encounters are very very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirits by encounters i don't just mean visionary encounters even encounters through the word an experience that makes god real to you an experience that makes a dimension of god real to you it could be aided through a vision it could be aided through a supernatural experience but regardless of what platform it comes through any experience capable of making a dimension of god become real to you is called an encounter true encounters produce conviction not memory conviction a true encounter listen it doesn't just leave you with a memory it produces conviction if you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of God, I will know. I don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you. When it is opened up to you, the first sign that you had an encounter is unusual conviction. It translates to faith. If God gives you an encounter of his healing power, it produces conviction. If God gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality, it must come with conviction. Say conviction. There are so many people in the body of Christ who are not convicted about the things they teach. It's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint, and that's important. It's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint, but it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction. It's not by shouting. It's not the volume of your voice. It's not the, the repetition of your grammar. Conviction is a realm where your speaking, your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you. Say encounters. We must crave for encounters. You know, people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out-of-body experiences. And they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of God. To now begin to contend for angelic encounters, heavenly encounters as above the word of God. No. The Bible says God appeared um, to Samuel in Shiloh by his word. Are we together? He appeared by his word. So an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel. And he says, promise, I was sent from heaven to you that from today you take the healing power of God to the nations. And then every time you stand, you say, I remember what the angel said. Yes, that's an encounter. But there are men like Reinhard Bonke who had encounters. They never had any visionary experience. When you listen to Reinhard Bonke's story, he will tell you that a day came they brought in a great man of god to preach the man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day and the morning of the second day reinhard bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people in africa if you tell people to bring the sick they are obedient they will bring the sick whether they are related to them or not they will that sense of nationhood will kick in they will drag every sick person and so they brought those people and the preacher told Reinhard Bonke, he said, the Lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place. You will preach and you will heal. Reinhard Bonke said, no, 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 no. You can't be playing. I mean, you are the great man of God. I'm only here to encourage you. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be on my way. Reinhard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces. And then all of a sudden, that's an encounter. The word of the Lord comes. You don't read it, it comes. In the fifth day of the fifth month of this, the word of the Lord came. There's the one you try to get, but the one that comes is what produces encounter. And Renard Bonke just looked and said, Lord, I will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing. And that was it. A man who has produced a ministry that has liberated Africa. Encounters. You can be reading a scripture. You can be reading John 3.16 but one day the word of the Lord will come to you 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes Jesus loves me you sang it in Sunday school it was not an encounter it was a recitation but when it comes as an encounter you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says ah, ah, you are deeper than this and he said that's the point it has not come to you but it came to me are we together encounters my life is a testimony of encounters i can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities may god give us encounters the meeting is called koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter if you are a prayer leader without an encounter a pastor without an encounter an apostle a prophet whatever you call yourself a time will come your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading are we together it's not by bold face bold face is not encounter i know god will show up please encounters produce convictions unto death but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters so you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing you lack encounters listen an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence not physical results your conviction becomes your primary evidence so god can call you to the nations as at the time you are speaking the only other listener is your wife but you still say god called me to the nations i love men of convictions conviction conviction we we live in a result driven a carnal result driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen people oftentimes will not believe you so you will need encounters let me tell you so that when things do not happen the way you want you are still left with your encounter job said though he slay me Yet will I trust him. I know him. The God in the mountain is still God in the valley. Let me tell you why many people gas out. Many pastors, many preachers. I've seen a lot of preachers say, God sent me to so, so, so city. When the city became too hot and whipped them, they left quietly. Encounters give you stamina. Encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina he said if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small one guy came and met me one time and he said god has called him into the apostolic ministry i said congratulations a few months later it became too hot for him and he came back he said i get it now i'm an evangelist i said go. i told him i said go for a retreat a retreat that produces an encounter because he thought it's just in a name usually when it becomes too hot people change persecution <laughs> we think the name will give you access for preaching fast so you say i am prophet a and b and c and then the heavy controversy that lands on your head you quietly remove it and say i am pastor joshua selman <laughs> say encounters may god give us encounters Amen. one big secret in my life is that god used encounters to convince me of my call solid encounters both visionary encounters word encounters prophetic encounters that's why no matter what anybody says or does i will never even pray about it that's how certain i am when you 
try to explain things to people you don't have conviction enough please talk to someone by your side and say get conviction get conviction strong conviction are we together strong conviction we doubt and we fall by the wayside and we make a mess of and you know it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people and then you are now forced to defend your advocacy but the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there if i believe god has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are 100 wheelchairs and i pray for them and nobody gets healed i tell them may god bless you and uh, have a nice day and i'll go to sleep and someone says but man of god ah it's either you are backsliding or something has happened i will go back and challenge myself to rise greater but i'll not go back saying god if it's that i didn't hear you well can you explain to me again no we're laughing but I'm, I'm trusting that god is speaking to us encounters do you know that the world follows men of conviction if i am a thief today there is a there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say look this guy knows what he's doing he's worth hearing terrorists are men of encounter and conviction they have met spirits the spirits told them certain things so while the government is trying to advise them and say why don't you become nice social beings they say all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you and you say are you sure you'll do this yes what of your life what of your wife and your family and they say to hell with them conviction from an encounter what encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence oh i saw god give a jimmy this it's not enough reason you must have a personal encounter we lack this a lot i'm taking out time to help you understand this we lack this a lot in the body of christ you can borrow joshua selman's revelation listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out and preach in a conference and say god said there is this and that and that but you know there is a way people look through you and they see that even you as you are preaching you are just saying lord i hope i'm right i'm about to pray joshua Selman prayed after that message and now i'm about to pray after my own then you stand and speak and say i see angels everywhere whether or not you are seeing them because you thought i was lying so now you say i see angels overflow are you ready say yes no encounter that's how preachers disgrace themselves convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results someone can guide you but the ultimate journey is that you meet christ you meet him not just theologically but you have an encounter say amen, amen. it's good to know the god of joshua selman but stay until that God becomes your God. The people told the woman, the, the Samaritan woman, he said, we believe you now, not just because you told us. We have seen him for ourselves. You came and introduced us, but ah, talking with him, he did something to us. In the name of Jesus, may God give us encounters. Over your business, over your life over your family so that when you go and you look at your cgpa and you look at it from 4.5 god forbid but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers you don't suddenly say ah and god said i'll be a leader god you must come and you see some prayers are, are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? you told me that this brother will marry me this one that he has done introduction what are you saying don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience we brag too much on hearsay 
I watch preachers talk sometimes and I'm saying, be careful, oh, Jesus is Lord, but his Lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding. If you are not healed in this meeting, except I'm not called. Hey. At the end of the meeting, only two people are healed. Encounters. Encounters. I crave for them. I create the atmosphere for them. I desire them in my life. Encounters. It's not about reading the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. It's not about quoting scripture, as important as it is. It's not about a display of Greek and Hebrew words. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions produce faith. Faith moves mountains. It's not what you do. It's the conviction behind what you do. Number two, the second platform upon which men do business with God is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. An encounter is one. You meet a person in an encounter but you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom is God helping us tonight your knowledge of the principles the working knowledge of the principles of the word of God is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact so what principles do you know it says and I will give you the keys right and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven king james says whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven amplified says whatever you allow whatever you disallow the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of david your life there is a dimension of impact in your life hear me brothers and sisters that is a product of the mysteries that you know this is what i define as dominion you've heard me say it again and again dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom we've spent this year as much as many other years dissecting these mysteries under the teaching secrets of the kingdom the series get it secrets of the kingdom right i taught you six mysteries that control mighty dramatic manifestations upon the earth mystery number one i taught you is the law of surrender the law of surrender that this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people complete surrender complete surrender Mystery number two is the power of a transformed mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, right? So, he's, so he is. I told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm. So you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it. You alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes. Mystery number three is the law of competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He says, He shall not stand before mean men, he shall stand before kings. Are we together? We we did this very, very mystery number four. I explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. A time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure. You don't know anything about that challenge, nor how to go out. At that time, the key is to acknowledge him. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Praise is a weapon for acknowledgement. So as you begin to acknowledge him, there is a promise attached. He said he will make straight your path. Mystery number five 
is the mystery i call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers men and women anointed commanded instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level i'm doing a recap it, it, please I, I don't know how to plead with you believe what i'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life there are three kinds of destiny helpers i shared with us the other time number one they are called divine connectors they do not have the ability to help you but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is joseph of arimathea a man who through his influence jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb you need them and then number three faithful men the third kind of destiny helpers faithful men 400 of these men came to david david was running he was a failure he was broke he was on his way ministry had packed up but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king and then the last mystery which in my opinion is the most powerful maybe secondary to only an encounter is the law of honor hebrews 7 7 and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the greater i told you that there is a system in the body of christ nobody blesses himself you cannot lift yourself to a new dimension are we together no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are at every point in your life there are people below you trusting god for your grace to lift them there are people above you there are those who already represent what your future aspirations are and there are people who you represent their future aspiration the recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly there are human beings that represent systems the recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities god has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality honor is the key to access every time a door closes over your life this honor closed it and every time a door opens over you honor opened it so there are many other mysteries that we have to learn i can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery one of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly now you read these things as verses until god opens your eyes then you'll see the reason why many people never have the gift of men because they are not friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown to be friendly means to be hospitable are we together it says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it many have entertained angels unaware it was through hospitality sarah trapped the angels and they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of sodom and gomorrah and it was on the strength of that hospitality that abraham was given access to that mystery and with it he rescued lot praise the lord the third platform upon which men receive from god and create lives of notable impact in the earth is covenant connection covenant connection covenant connection may god make us believe what i'm sharing may god make us believe it may god make us believe it in the name of jesus christ covenant connection the bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the sin the seat of the scornful he says but his delight 
what is in the law of the lord and on that law he meditates day and night then he says he shall be this is how his success will be in the similitude of that of a tree if the bible says you shall be like something study that thing it says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree how does a tree rise number one it is planted from the stem that rises branches begin to come all branches do not move in the same direction but regardless of their direction the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to they may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall taller than buildings and the trees can stand for years and decades branches fall and rise they are pruned and they come again but the stem connected to the root remains intact any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies you don't water the branches you water the roots and it has a system are we together trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time a system so he said he shall be like a tree listen our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant please you have to understand this our personal work with God is based on relationship however kingdom advancement is based on covenant not the covenant of Moses not the covenant of the New Testament I'm not talking old and new covenant a covenant is a system through which God guarantees a continuity of his program now listen listen look up please let me teach you this get it get it in the name of Jesus Christ the way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment please listen so what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of god are we together so every dispensation has a dimension of god earmarked for them to experience but the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when god wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation his first assignment is to find a man say a man when he finds a man he enters a personal covenant with that man that personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of god is revealed to the dispensation no other person will access that dimension in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with god are you getting what i'm saying yeah god will not reveal the same thing to everybody he will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system are we together the yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace it has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness it is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel so god calls men every time you are talking about redemption the journey of redemption and the doctrine of christ starts from abraham not noah not adam are we together whether it's christianity whatever kind of religion the moment they are communicating the doctrine of christ the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of christ starts from abraham god called one man to come out of a place called all of the chaldeans genesis chapter 12 right he wanted to use his father terror but something happened and he the, the you know the button passed on to abraham and he called abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the chaldeans and he called him and he said look i am calling you out come out of your father's house your kindred and all of that and i will do certain things with you and abraham obeyed him 
There are so many people in the Bible that represent God's covenant point. There are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of God. That law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit, your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of God in that dimension. But this is where Satan cheats a lot of people. Please listen to me carefully. There's still something else I'm talking about, but we need to understand this. God asked me to reiterate these things. You know why we honor men? We honor men for many reasons. Number one is the anointing they carry. Number two, the sacrifice that they have with God that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life. Number three is the spiritual system that they represent. When David wanted permission to fight Goliath, do you know the question Saul asked? He said, whose son is this? In other words, I want to know the tribe he came from so that I know whether this can be possible. This boy is too young. I'm a king. But I need to know where he's coming from. So we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamin, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy. But there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will we'll see who, who is the dog. I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires but they never lack whether they pray or not even when they are not tithing it's a covenant there is something they are connected to whether they know it or not that affords them those spiritual possibilities <sighs> open our eyes oh God in the name of Jesus Christ I have seen pastors who when they stand to teach he will almost sleep. But when they call upon the God of heaven, he shows up. It's not personal encounter. In fact, many of them may have a lot of character defaults. And while you are talking about their character, it's like God owes them his presence. They call him and he must show up. There is a covenant he respects. He says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth. Are we together? So some of our people, although they were in the village with witchcraft, they had 16 children, one woman, 16 children. And yet, after 16 children, the woman is still standing, her stomach is still as flat as an arrow. You wonder whether the children grew in a basket. It's a covenant. Brothers and sisters, it's not about knowing what drug to take. Some things are spiritual. When they are spiritual, they show and you see it. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Hmm. Oh, you better believe it. So that when you look at a man, you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar. When you know that, there will be no room for pride when God begins to give you results. Because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment. Purely an issue of what? Alignment. Spiritual alignment. There was a time, for instance, in living faith, it still happens, where there were strange testimonies, 2005, 2006, creative, those ones were, it's what the Bible calls the walking of miracles, not testimonies, where a man would tell you, I was a cleaner, and by Sunday, the owner of the company said he's leaving Nigeria, and they made me a CEO. Strange testimonies. So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching. Sleeping. They say in Jesus' name, he never says amen. He's even angry. But something still came on him. With the anger, he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says, you are staying five years in this house. The rent is, is free. And the man says, I don't understand what is happening to me. Two weeks later, they call him and say, there is a job we want to give you. And he says, I don't understand. There is a covenant. 
when God looks at you he sees the covenant there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain hallelujah if you know this thing I'm teaching you you can you can make it's not a license to sin you can make the worst blunder on earth quarter to shame the covenant kicks in and God says I remember <sighs> Jonah Jonah was running as a rebel but God used what happened to describe what will happen to Jesus Jonah he says the same way Jonah was in the belly of the fish was that a good testimony yet yeah, Jesus used it God had Solomon for the sake of his father David when Solomon dedicated the temple he lifted the temple and he said Lord I enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray whether their faith level is there or not hearken to them so in the days of Daniel they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray Daniel knew that if he will use his personal faith he's a human being the truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life so he opened the window to Jerusalem and he started praying and listen that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den God did not show up because of Daniel he showed up because of the covenant what have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection some of us every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your your personal push which is good but brothers and sisters the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life and if you have to wait till you become strong you may not even live for that to happen there are people in koinonia here they are not tightening, but they are having strange results they even them they are doubting they are saying what's wrong something is covering you it's a covenant Break every chain. Break every chain. Those who know this do business with God upon the earth and open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Living faith, redeemed and MFM. There are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of, of ownership. They can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land. They must give them land as much as they want. It's a revelation. Are we together? Brothers and sisters, some things are not just about fasting and prayer. There is an advantage God placed in the body. And if you are not aware of it, you may never step into certain dimensions. Never step into certain dimensions. I came to show you certain things. God said I should teach it again. If God says I should teach it, it means many of us did not get it. There are certain things in my life I will, I will never suffer and struggle over. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that foolish. I am not that foolish. You see, it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah it was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being? Is that how you go to heaven? But that's how he went to heaven. That's how you know that it's not a normal human being. 
he knew where the gate of heaven was beyond the Jordan he said I'm about to leave he knew where to wait for the chariots ah. a man was taking fresh air on a mountain and they came to harass him he used one of the elements of the supernatural caught fire he said I will not just use my mouth if I be a man of God let fire come from heaven he prayed once and fire came is that how you pray when you stand look at what he, hi koinonia hear what i'm teaching you listen when they were about to judge the prophets of baal there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them not just your personal prayer and fasting when the prophets of baal were there they were prophets under the custody of jezebel and look at the mockery elijah said laugh he said he said cut yourself shout maybe your god is sleeping like if i am elijah i will be fasting <laughs> deliver me oh god wipe my tears for the sake of your glory i will be writing out the worship songs looking for somebody to play a cymbal but here was a man crossing his leg and mocking at them from morning till evening he laughed because he knew they were wasting their time after everything they caught themselves so that their god will see blood and remember their covenant with him when they tried singing and praising and it did not work they danced around the prophets of baal they started bringing blood what is blood the covenant baal remember our covenant as prophets with you and elijah shut the heavens and said keep calling on him then when it was time for elijah i thought elijah would have just said all right god fire come down he would have been surprised he said give me 12 stones 12 stones listen listen let me teach you something the bible says in the new jerusalem it said the gates of the city there were 12 gates and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of israel every one of those tribes represented a dimension of god and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles he said give me 12 stones and the prophets of Baal were watching after it he put a sacrifice and then he said pour water the water was a mystery he was not just trying to say so that you don't think i hit fire because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm the spirit the water and the blood so he said pour water afterwards he lifted his eyes to the heaven the pattern was correct follow me and he said oh god and the fire the bible said the fire came licked the sacrifice and swept everything right and then hear what he said the moment that happened he said pursue all the prophets of Baal. don't let one escape and kill them hear me people of god there are dimensions there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone we fool ourselves thinking because we know god every mountain will just go like that it's all things are possible but they are they are possible based on the knowledge available to you if you can see me as i'm going you will have something the moment he left and he held the mantle he would have gone to the well and say i am a man of god pat he would have been surprised he said where is the lord god as far as god was concerned he did not see elisha he saw the covenant did the water obey absolutely do you know why joshua was successful god transferred a mystery to him as i was with moses as i was the way i related with him so i will relate with you he said and because of that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life so when the angel appeared joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel the angel had to explain he would have died the word of god would have killed the angel not the sword of joshua he said are you for us or against us and the angel said hold on neither he had to explain because a man was running with the word of god The Bible says, for instance, it says where two or three are gathered, where? In my name. The meaning is as touching my authority. There is a dimension of God that only shows up under corporate fellowship. 
you will never have that dimension alone in your room fast for 100 days you will not see those things that was why the psalmist was crying he said early will i seek you he said to see your power and your glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary there's something i've seen that only happens when believers gather i've not seen it can you make it happen in my life hallelujah he says if two of you shall agree hold my hands Jimmy, as touching anything there are certain levels of prayer that is not just about i am alone the veil has been torn I, I'm, I'm alone i can access christ it's a system there are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree you can just say one prayer that was why the apostles when they were threatening them did they pray individually acts chapter 4 remember they came together because they understood this it took that kind of grace to bring the holy spirit on the day of pentecost they could not pray alone and have the holy spirit come so when the bible says acts chapter 2 verse 1 now when the day of pentecost was fully come he said they were all gathered in one accord that formation gave the holy spirit room to come in acts chapter 4 when they threatened them they came together and said lord behold their threatenings he says stretch forth your right hand now to heal and that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child and the building shook there is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of christ the body of christ is a mystery of possibilities when you understand the mysteries that govern the body of christ you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done Are we together i remember when a few people wrote jam here you were you were testaments of the things marks being added i'm not talking of those 40 40 marks you see people someone will check his jam 197 go and check again 231 how did that happen look let me tell you something when you see a man of god study the systems around his life don't just say this person is anointed Kai, he has power what makes the heaven owe him it's like it's like god god owes certain men of god a debt he must pay even if they call his name joking he has to show up there is something that makes that happen my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god our covenant is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise oh god sing it one more time my altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. It's calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise. Listen. Let me tell you something powerful. Numbers 24. Let me do my teaching now. Mike. Numbers 24. Let me share something with you that will break some gates open. I want your spirit to be sensitive. Something will happen in this place today. Numbers 24. Mambro Setarakota Shalabratika Parata. Balaam was called by Balak to curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it, so I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, it's actually 23 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. 
he went not as in other times to seek for enchantment now there's a lot to say about Balaam the Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam the error of Balaam the way of Balaam there is a long story on that I don't want to go into that but he set his face towards the wilderness let's rush it go ahead and Balaam lifted his eyes Balaam wanted to find out where listen listen let me explain the whole scene for you a prophet is brought by Balak and he said cause koinonia make things to start going wrong for people are we together now Balaam tells them look oh, I am a prophet in other words I don't speak the way I want so as we stand there whatever you hear me say is what God is saying agreed they said agreed so they brought gifts Balaam would have sought God by lifting his face to the hills that's the key Sammy said I will lift up my eyes to the hills they know where their help comes from but now Balaam used enchantment so that God would not be able to prophesy through him are you getting the story he used divination to invoke spirits so that they would prophesy so Balaam stood and after he used those enchantments he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings and he was surprised he moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them he went to another place about to speak and he blessed them and Balaam said ah. Balak was angry and he said what is all this I brought you to curse them all that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings please watch this and Balaam lifted his eyes to check they were on a mountain and he said no I'm a prophet let me look what is the reason why no curse is working and this is what he saw hallelujah and he saw Israel abiding in what his tents there was a spiritual formation from the valley Israel were wise people they didn't just say let's rest they said ah, it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us so let us engage the formation there is a pattern hmm. they arranged themselves according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center and they said let's see who will cause us they kept the card there so when Balaam stood at the mountain to curse the ark fought him back and he said I don't know what is wrong I can't curse them I can't curse them then listen to what he said according to their stripes and finally the spirit of God came upon him this is what he said the secret and he took a parable that's how prophets remember Hosea chapter 12 I have spoken in similitudes or parables I have multiplied visions he took a parable and he said Balaam the son of Beor had said speaking about himself and the man whose eyes are open talking about himself had said verse 4 and he had said which heard the words of God which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance but having his eyes open verse 5 how goodly are thy tents O Jacob and thy tabernacles O Israel that's the secret I look at your tent and your spiritual formation and I see you arranged in a way that no cause no enchantment that's why he said no divination no enchantment against Jacob it's not just because they are Christians please listen to what I'm teaching you now there was a spiritual pattern and literally Balaam as a true prophet could not cause them they didn't fight they just could not cause them when it was 10 in in second chronicles 20 verse 20 or well we read from verse 15 downwards if there's time they were about to fight three kings came together to fight them and the bible said they had another formation Kai. these guys use formations for victory not stories they inquired of the lord what pattern will produce the result and they said let the worshippers be in front and when the worshippers were in front together with the ark the warriors were behind he said this is not an issue of sword and they began to sing hearken all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus said the lord be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but the lord's let's read down quickly tomorrow go up against them and so on and so forth 17 listen 
He said, ye shall not what? Set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not or be dismayed. Tomorrow you go up against them. Verse and Joseph had bowed his head, this and that and that. Verse 19, there's something I'm looking for. Now listen, and the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what? Praise the Lord of the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Right? And then of course, they rose early in the morning and then when they began to praise, you know, a prophecy came. Next verse. He says, and when he had consulted the people, he appointed what? Look at the formation. Who did he appoint? Do you use musicians to fight war? Musicians to fight war. Three kings about to kill you. I hope you know they were not acting. It was real death. But there was a pattern. He says, and they should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord. For his mercy endured forever. What happened? And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah and were smitten. Next verse. For the children of this stood up to slay themselves. Read the last sentence. If you are a Christian, want to read. Everyone helped to destroy military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you he now killed the other person and killed himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something i teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle listen i want to teach you something very powerful it's a principle that is used in occultism it's a principle that is used it was an an aberration of god's principle listen you only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation are you getting what i'm saying so if the ambassador of u.s comes to the u.s consulate office in abuja it was designed to accommodate him his appetites the colors the architecture are we together there is a pattern based on the ideology of the united states they built the embassy that way so whether he is in nigeria or he's in america it does not make any difference to him because the embassy in nigeria reflects the dexterity and the glory of america are we together now watch this if i want a spirit any spirit please give me this sir. sorry no if i want a spirit assuming i'm a herbalist i am not a herbalist assuming i'm a herbalist are we together and i want a spirit to come upon this i'm not just going to say spirit come spirit break out and then you think it will come no there is i must find out what that spirit is and the nature of its operation and the kind of atmosphere that makes it come and i will make this water become like the atmosphere the spirit must come atmospheres are magnets they draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories please listen to this this is very important so this is what the psalmist said the holy ghost wanting to come into the new creation he said a body has thou prepared you prepared it in such a way that when i come into that body it will be as though i am in heaven when the body was prepared the spirit could come and that body today is called the ecclesia the body of christ it was built in a particular way christ the foundation the apostolic and the prophetic and then the, it rises and he said that body you have prepared for me so god is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him are we together now 
when during our traditional festivals when they want to see certain spirits what do the masquerades do or the priests they wear a particular attire having a particular kind of animal skin alligator skin then some use snakes some use hyenas come on talk to me africa are we together so we have don't don't act as if you came from 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 the middle east we are here we are home amen they use fire they provoke these spirits they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern i counseled one man um on on tuesday on wednesday in abuja before i came he's one of the popular nigerian directors directors of nigerian film you know and all of that and he told me something he said man of god most of the nigerian films you see us acting the snake we use they are real snakes but what they do is they go to charmers you know these guys are charm snakes so they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen the ring has a pattern it's a language the snake understands that's why sometimes it backfires because those powers expire they must be renewed if at the point of expiration you are the one holding the snake the snake that you were you were in nice romance with would turn and enjoy you immediately are we together patterns so there are men whose lives are patterns you curse them it returns back to you and you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a curse at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed yeah, i'm not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vowed to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die and paul lived many years afterwards i'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is is like a spiritual formation that will make the holy spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened is a pattern balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said i can't cause them i'm trying i'm making efforts listen i can't tell you how many times on my way to travel people will call me and say apostle i just had a dream are you about to travel i say yes they say please sir don't travel i love you so much koinonia loves you i just had a dream this morning and in that dream i saw a plot and i saw that you had a ghastly motor accident and you died and then i said okay i appreciate now they are not they are not lying they saw it and what they saw was correct but there is a pattern kabarato satayaba David, I'm come and sing a song there, my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. And your influence is all over me. Let's say.
let your influence is all over me. Yeah. I'm under the shadow. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen. Brothers and sisters. When it comes to kingdom advancement. Don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone. There are limitations to your personal spiritual life. As far as kingdom advance is concerned. There are certain strategies of witchcraft. That it takes more than you as a person to conquer. It's not that Christ is not king of kings and lord of lords. Please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse him just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable, I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they, they, they kill you like a chicken are we together? please listen listen There are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight. I don't know if we can touch all three, but we'll stop somewhere and pray. The first of that pattern listen is the power of altars an altar is a pattern I'm not talking altar like coven no an altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted every time a covenant is enacted an altar is raised on earth as a memorial you see that all through in scripture every time people had covenants with god or with themselves they raised what altars an altar is nothing diabolic at all an altar is just a token it's a representation it doesn't even have to be physical a representation please listen a representation a platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed not only be remembered but to be activated three things happen on altars renewal right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars Listen, please listen. Every man of God, every true ministry called of God has an altar. They may not call it altar. They may call it all kinds of things. Some call it covenant. Some call it altar. I don't care what they call it, but this is what it is. It is a token that represents a covenant between God and that man and serves as a memorial. The altar that was raised in the day of, of um, Noah, when he raised that altar, there was a sign of a rainbow. Is that true? And God gave this as a token. When circumcision itself is a token. I hope you know. When you circumcise a child, it's a revelation that was given to Abraham. Circumcise them. Joshua circumcised them. 
the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities ride the same way i have gleaned upon the covenant of others with god and it has become an advantage it has boosted my personal spiritual life it has boosted the possibilities that i can see in my own life please hear me and i want you to be sensitive we're about to pray be very sensitive right now when abel died when cain killed abel what cried please answer me what cried and he said the blood of abel cries and the blood is speaking abel is dead the blood is saying revenge you have to bring vengeance upon cain and jesus now says that even his blood too speaks the only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant are we together there are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men please listen 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 i want to give you spiritual intelligence you don't bind an altar it was enacted by covenant it's called the law of displacement there are two lights they keep shining until a greater light comes then it overshadows them are we together these are spiritual laws so many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming they think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast what they were praying against is what happens maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say look three days i'm praying on the third day drive fast you are looking like a skeleton you are about to break you just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes and here the person comes as if your prayer made nonsense in the prayer you are shouting, jesus jesus and the person is just looking at you and say keep shouting your jesus there and comes to do exactly what he said to do you know i know this thing so well because it happened in my life have you've heard my story wicked spirits will come and oppress me and come into my room my own was not even an experience I see them they see me but I couldn't do anything about it some of you say I shouted Jesus the pastor said, shout it well you shouted it well nothing happened please don't laugh I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray are we together we have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that God has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with God that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on Tuesday to pray, you find out that you who are struggling to pray for five minutes, you now stretch for two hours. It's because something picked you. That's why you can go back home and say, ah. So it is God's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down, Satan will still not be able to reach you. Before you come back to life, there is a system that covers you. Altars that we can take advantage of 
there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop i want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that i have discovered i found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life though anointed though a great man of god though having encounters with jesus at a point in my life there were certain mountains that would not move there were certain doors that would not open regardless of what i did and i said lord but your word says if i have faith like a monster seed i know that i have faith and then god began to teach me for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep because they cannot discern the body their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit everything is possible but you need to know how to make it possible you need to know how to make it possible this night looking at me and hearing me by the thousands are men and women who have done certain things alone you have struggled spiritually you love God you have held on to some of these principles but the truth is that door has refused to open you have done what you know to do I show you the third key you must engage it's called the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants God has entered covenants with individuals he has entered covenants with systems please I can beg you some of you are looking for admission listen to what I'm telling you and get into school otherwise sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on some things in life will not move just by your personal faith do you know that when Jesus was on earth he was not the only miracle worker please answer me is that true there was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in Jesus' camp but they were still performing miracles not by Baal not Beelzebub and they said ah, Jesus this is this is strange ah, I thought you were the savior and he said I paraphrase him I came to introduce something new but until the new comes the old is still valid there was a way miracles were done in the old covenant there were people who believed it there was a priesthood that made it possible for instance an angel will come and steer the water was Jesus around when it happened no but it happened a particular prophet in the bible when a woman was sick or someone was sick he made herbs leaves and put it on the legs of the person are we together if you understand what i'm teaching you then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not you have done all you know to do listen stop trying harder the key is not harder the key is step back and look at the body of christ don't look at yourself again look at the body of christ what spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door i'm looking for you can be a man of god full of grace and prayer but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry and you are saying lord we have prayed we have fasted this prosperity thing is not working step back and look at the body of christ a body has thou prepared for me sometimes god can give you just one instruction go to any living faith branch hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that you don't even have to be prayed for the moment you pray for it you go back and god says fine what you have done 
is called alignment to a covenant and God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant Bishop David Oedipo and you will find out mysteriously mysteriously something happened recently somebody called me and they had a court case recently and Ejimi, this court case humanly speaking was already against the person there is no human way on earth he would have won that case and when he called me i said tell me the truth when he told me everything ah, i said you're in trouble you're in trouble because I, I i know a bit about legalities and i know that based on that thing if he's to spend time in the prison it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children but i told him i said well i don't know what to tell you but if you can believe what i want to tell you there can be a way out i told him i said i can pray for you god has given me grace for territories and i want to pray for you i prayed for that guy do you know i got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of because of fear he didn't show up in the court he refused to show up and later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court now please brothers and sisters please you went to school you are intelligent in nigeria who does that <sighs> you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your you reign you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities. He recognizes their existence. So he says your only advantage is that I am the head. Not that you say they are not there. No. It's your Bible. I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. But many people say, assume they are not there are you kidding when they refuse jesus from entering back they say who is this king of glory he had to explain himself christ is the head of principalities he said he has been made above thrones so he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like God is not alive please hear what I'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a Nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were in Mina, I'm sure maybe my friend Pastor Pete Rock is listening. Pete Rock, you know, I love House on the Rock and all of that. When we went to Mina, Aaron, you were there. The same thing you see in Koinonia. Crowds here, overflow on top and then outside. It's alignment. Brothers and sisters, you may be a musician, but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs. You will find out that things are opening you are a student but you align to somebody who is paying you salary and they say no you must be sleeping with the man you say no I, I i just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with god that is respected even by hell let me tell you brothers and sisters what is not at work in your life is still available it takes humility and alignment Many people will insult me for what I'm teaching you now because they will think I'm teaching you human worship. God is my witness. I, I, I don't have time for all of those things, but you have to be careful who you listen to. Don't let men do well-meaning to deceive you. There are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities. You may argue it and never see certain things happen in your life. Please hear me look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that god has put in the body 
a body has thou prepared for me a body has thou prepared this koinonia that you look at every time maybe one day i will take out time and share the whole journey so that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry if i want fame there are easier ways i'm not dull i can write books are we together access to the riches and the blessings of heaven there are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities i don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies hallelujah we're already preparing to buy our land i will not tell you where it is until we buy it some of you will be surprised you will open your mouth and say it's a lie you can't get land like that a property that will swallow cgc how many times in this area because when you catch the keys listen 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 I don't say this to brag i'm challenging you it's, it's not by trying no door opens to shouting it opens to keys god is giving you something now you have been writing jam you are brilliant but it's not working don't stay foolishly and say i i i know this time around i i got 250 no are we together possibilities there are men and women who God has put in the body of Christ in territories that's why Satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to fight them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you but as we pray the devil is a liar somebody's door is about to be opened rise up on your feet everybody and let's pray we are going to pray three prayer points and I want you to pray it with every, every ounce of strength. No carelessness, no looking around. You are going to cry to God. Prayer point number one. Lord, I acknowledge that I am limited as a person. No matter how spiritual I am. As a pastor, as an apostle, as a prophet, as a teacher, as an individual. I am limited. And I come before you with every sense of humility, acknowledging my limitation. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I acknowledge. Lord, I acknowledge. I acknowledge that you have built a system. You have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. This strategy called the body of Christ to lift men, to bail them out of captivity. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we're about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change. Pray 
Outside, make sure you're praying. Those online, make sure you're praying. himself so Jesus had to come and man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ it's a pattern there are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others not just of Christ but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again they have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again but if you do not know satan will cheat you there are times you will stand before that red sea please hear me just the same please you stand before the red sea and the red sea will refuse to part you will you will invoke your personal altar it will not open let me tell you there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. Remember what tribe you belong to. Remember the spiritual possibilities that come. And say, oh God of salvation. Remember, 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 remember. 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 And all of a sudden, your God will arise, not for your sake. Listen, hear me. I don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith. I can't remember which of them. But there was a woman who had been a faithful titer. I don't know if it's redeemed or living faith. One of the ministries, she testified. Armed robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband. They stepped into the house. They were with guns. The man was there. His wife was there. All that there was was to shoot. And there was nothing to do. The man just, he knew he was gone. All else failed. And all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet. And dropped it on the ground. Remember the covenant. Is it not your house that was built with my money? Is it not souls that are saved with my money? Don't waste your time trying to say one day God will come. No, that one day you can create it. The day the pattern is there. As powerful as Jesus was, his heavens were closed. 
until he had to encounter a man the heavens of Jesus did not open because he was called Jesus it was open based on the covenant that came down to John the Baptist and so when John the Baptist saw Jesus he said behold the lamb and he said that's not the issue my heavens are closed and he said suffer it to be so I can't neglect the pattern and when John dipped Jesus and brought him out there was a transference and God responded the heavens opened and he said this is my beloved son please hear me it's not as hard as your life makes it look you just don't know what to do we are going to cry and say Lord show me what I must do to come out of this challenge in my presence lift your voice and pray there is always something to do koinonia cry show me oh God what is the secret the missing link to my healing ministry the missing link to bring prosperity to my life Who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? There is a mystery, there is a pattern, there is a mystery, there is a pattern. Let hope rise. Darkness when losing your own light. Let hope, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Darkness when losing your own light. Hallelujah! Listen, we are going to pray. Please look up, everybody. We are going to pray. Just one more prayer and I will pray for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, not I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now please pay attention. We're about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry the possibilities that your appearance the sacrifices are brought I invoke it upon my life pray the covenant of open doors the covenant of his Shatina glory Access to kings, access to strange favor. Pastors, pray. Let it come upon my ministry, oh God. Pray. Let it come upon my life. Lord, I've written this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried, but I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to make money. By my strength, I've fasted, I've sown seed. I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to get a job. I've tried to get a job. It's not working. I cry to the God of heaven. Let hope, let hope. 
Let it rise tonight. Era mashena na na na. Ere de masa na 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 maso na 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 na. Ere na 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 maso na 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 na. Ere na na na. The covenant of long life. Habarata kata frata kata bela de bokoso do. The covenant of honor, strange honor, access to kings, access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray this next prayer, listen, there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people. This, these are testimonies coming from heaven. Are we together? I want you to pray it with all your heart. All your heart. All your heart. Listen. Listen. See. See. That you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come. It must be intentional. Proximity is not connection. Are we together? Proximity is not connection. I have tapped into the covenant that God has had with people who have gone higher than me. And they have opened me to strange doors. Realms that I know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life. I'm a product of many anointings. Many graces. Many spiritual possibilities. Please hear what I'm telling you. And step into a strange... I show you a deep mystery. Many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you, you will come back to this message and it will make sense to you. There are many ministries that are anointed but they may never grow. They have done all they need to do. They have prayed. There are groups. There are all kinds of sincere people around. You've done all you know to do. Listen, you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself. That's why God put the body. A body has thou prepared. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? There are mysteries. When a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife, I couldn't believe it. In minutes, she had given birth. Case closed. Because there are mysteries you engage. Are we together? Please hear what I'm saying. You see Hope standing. You see Aaron's wife standing. Almost as if they didn't give birth. Right? There is a mystery. What you don't know does not mean it cannot work. You just don't know how to make it work. Are we together? We are going to pray. One last prayer with all your heart. Every area you know must work in your life. Listen, listen, listen. It pleases the Lord when you have testimonies. It pleases the Lord there are some of us, certain sicknesses are killing us. No, You've taken drugs, you've done everything without your imagination. There are, there, are, there are graces that we have seen. Sometimes, all it takes is recognition to say, Lord, I tap into this grace. I shared with you my story when I went to sow a seed to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. And when I came out, the Lord asked me, kneel down on the ground, bare ground that ground. I laid my hands upon it. It's not about idolizing altars and all of that, no. And he said, lay your hands on the ground. I laid my hands on the bare ground. And the Lord said, from this day, you have entered the overflow anointing. Are we together? It was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said, my son, forever you will walk upon gold. That's what that mama told me. Till tomorrow, to, whether she's a human being or an angel, I don't know. I bought sugar cane of 50 naira. Sugar cane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever. Are we together? 
you join them, you will die like them. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing. Even when they are quarter to destruction, they will still be bragging. If you are not seeing results for a long time in your life, please calm down and find out what is it. Thank God for the area you are seeing results. But what of the areas where there are no results? We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute. And say, Lord, the unction, the grace, the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open. If it did not come through my personal prayer life, then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house. I take advantage of this spiritual formation. Are we praying? Go ahead and pray. I'm about to pray for you, but pray. The anointing paparatoshata that must come upon my life, must come upon my ministry, must come upon my prayer group. The grace. Listen, let me tell you something. You will never be the same. Many of you do not even understand what God is doing. He's giving you more than a miracle. He's giving you more than a miracle. Lift your hands, young man. You. Take that fire right now. In the name of Jesus. You will step into new levels. New dimensions of grace. New levels. And new dimensions of grace. I hear in my spirit restoration. 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 The mantle is coming on men. I see missing things returning to people. Restoration. Shabakata. Shagatabarata touch. Restoration. By the Spirit. Restoration. Help them, please. Restoration. Restoration. Kalaposokaya. Restoration of joy, restoration of peace. I prophesy it, I create it, I make it happen. I make it happen. I make it happen by a sent word. Restoration, restoration, restoration. be restoration strange testimony of divine restoration strange testimony of divine restoration hallelujah hallelujah i believe in the lord and I believe that it's his will to give us miracles this night. I believe with all my heart that it is God's will that no one will walk and go back the same way he came. That's what I believe. I believe it with all my heart. Father, let everything that leaves your people today never return to them. Never return to them never return to them in the name of Jesus please sit down for a few minutes if you can just sit for a few minutes please the anointing oils the Lord gave me very strange instruction tonight hallelujah before I minister will be very very fast very fast but there will be dramatic testimonies. Dramatic testimonies. While I was praying, I saw myself anointed with oil. The Lord says, Go as you have seen. So, before I begin to pray, I'm going to pray on an anointed oil. God gave me an encounter during the end of the year. 
He said, I've multiplied my anointing and my grace upon your life. You will see wonders in your midst. That's what God told me. You will see wonders, not miracles. Wonders in your midst. Wonders in your midst. For as you move, I will move. That's what the Lord said. As you move. When God increases a man's anointing, it's not for himself. He increases his anointing because the Bible says, where sin abound, much more grace. God knows that the times that befall men are wicked times that will not need a casual anointing. Light me, Lord. Light my way. Light me, Lord. Like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Let me just talk on one thing and then we'll pray. Please be very sensitive to what God is doing. I'm not sure I can teach everything that I had planned for. I just plan to challenge us. But I'll just share one thing. There is a lady and a guy that the power of God will touch outside. Please bring them. I want to talk to them. A lady outside and a gentleman, two of them, the anointing of God will come mighty upon them. Mighty upon them. Sisters, it pays to walk with the Lord. It pays to walk with the Lord. You know why many people never carry the presence of God? We have deceived people for a long time that there is nothing to do to carry the presence of God. Nothing can be further from that truth. There is a huge price, a huge price to carry the presence of God. Those who don't walk in the reality, unfortunately, are the ones who teach about it the most. And they teach all kinds of theories and grammar. And deceive people in the body of Christ that there's nothing to be done. Just believe. Are you joking? Everything that is of value has a price, brothers and sisters. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. You want to command signs and wonders, there is a huge price. The price is death. The price is death. The price is not negotiation. Only dead men carry the glory of God. The glory of God is not pure. Only dead men carry His glory. Only dead men carry His glory. Ask that I declare. Lord, I bring your presence into the lives of these people. May their lives never be the same. I stretch my hands over them. I declare that this cause that has followed your family, I bring it to an end. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. It's not theory. It's not a book you write. It's a reality. It's not something you explain. I told us that the Bible says it's a year of trial. Remember the teaching? That there will be less talk. Less talk. God, God has said it again. God told me 
that there will be less talk. There's too much noise making in the body of Christ. Noise making. Excellent communications that carry no life, no power. So people go back with their problems. They keep getting intelligent in their brains and no result to justify it. That's why we are singing that song. When his light comes upon you, the worst is that they will criticize you, but no one will deny the finger of God. Listen, it's not hard. It's because we men of God have lied to you. We gather you and make it look as if it's a fortune to get the hand of God. No, sir. There is a price. The price for God's presence is not wearing suits. The price for God's presence is not learning Greek and Hebrew. Please hear me, especially if you're a pastor here. The price for God's presence is not protocol and gathering people and feeling like a big man. I say it again. The price for the glory is death. Except the corn of good falls to the ground. Anyone can preach what he wants to preach about it. But brother, if you want to be used by God in this generation, I tell you the price is death. You don't, you don't do part-time with God and get his glory. Part-time nonsense is the reason why many people never find God. There is a search. You seek him like a treasure that you will die if you don't find. Not a treasure that you do something else if you don't find him. You seek him as a treasure that you will die if you don't find him. Christ for his glory. So don't let somebody tell you, every man I can get to God. No, possibilities are defined by the sacrifices upon every man's altar. So don't let anyone fool you and say what any man can do, any other man can do. Theoretically true. But practically, my brother, no sir. It's like saying any man can become a professor. You didn't lie. But any, everybody will not be a professor. There is a price. One of the things I want you to learn tonight is please may God grant you the grace to respect anointed people when you see them. Do you know why many people bring curses upon their lives? When a man of God has a track record with God, listen, let me, let me give you a, I don't know why I'm talking along this line. If this is all the encouragement before I begin to minister to you, some of the yokes upon the lives of people are not caused by they are not caused by generational causes they are caused by foolishness are we together now yeah. when when you trivialize what god is doing in a man you trivialize the investment that god has made upon that man and that grace never blesses you you open up yourself to woes and tragedies for instance there are some of our family members right now the problem they are crying for that they can hop from city to city paying money for prayer praying money for deliverance paying money for counseling can be received freely if only a heart of honor and humility is in place when I was on my way coming back I saw many people sitting down outside and just smiling admiring the crowds of people coming and honestly not because I'm the one preaching I said my God can a man be this foolish Will I ever see the presence and the glory of God close to me and not jump at it? There are people who started traveling day before yesterday. They don't even know where to stay. And they are just more than grateful they are in the presence of God. And there are others who are a minute walk away. It usually is like that. That's why people never receive. There are people, while I'm talking now, they are scattered all around Jesus. They say, wow, this guy... Maybe some will say he has charm. Go and get it. Get the charm that produces this result. You think it's easy to get a charm? May God grant you the fruit that when you see God in a place and a thing, you plunge in hands. Not that you sit down be a spectator. And allow your life to waste away. This year is not the year you should play with any opportunity God gives. Because on the other side of God's presence is a fierce, fierce 2007. Waiting for disobedient people. 
like Goshen and Egypt? Are you hearing the cries of glory? Are you hearing the lamentation, the hopelessness? People are confused. They don't even know what to do with their lives again. Charms are not working again. Jobs are not working again. Everything is going on. And God calls a solemn assembly so that he will step in and bless me. Very good. Forever Yahweh Yahweh Lord we look to Yahweh Yahweh I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities? And the anointings that are available. It's a tragic situation. To have men and women. Well meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely. Never have anything work well in their life. I identified a few reasons. And I want you to learn this very quickly. Because we are going to pray. Please, can you take this anointing? Just can you take it and keep it here? Is that okay? Please, it's, it's nothing fetish. I'm just, it's just an instruction. Just, just soak the glory. Just drop it here. Thank you. Listen, why do these things happen to me? Number one, very quickly. The first reason I identified and I wrote it here is it may be a long sentence but just listen carefully. The conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. The conscious exclusion of Jesus, not God, not God, Jesus in their lives and affairs. The number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs. I don't mean they are not born again. That's not what I'm saying. The conscious exclusion, like you want to have a serious meeting, then you tell somebody, please, can you go outside? The conscious, willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. Are we together now? You see, there is this arrogance and overdependence of our intellectualism. I'm not against intellectual prowess. You should know that. I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth. But listen to me. Overdependence on our abilities, our connection, our education, our wisdom business skills etc these things make us to consciously exclude jesus in our lives usually we include jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do oh i went to school doesn't jesus know i'm a master's holder jesus wait this is the issue of intelligence when we get to spiritual issues we bring you and then he steps out because he's, he's a very, very gentle man. 
pride over dependence on our ability. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Listen, and lean not on your own understanding. Right? The next verse says, In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Verse 7 says, Do not be wise. Be not wise in your own eyes. It says, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. What is the evil? Depending on your strength. Let me tell you why God is humbling so many people. This arrogance of being self-made, self-made degree holder, self-made doctor, self-made professor, self-made millionaire, self, there is nobody that is self-made. Everybody is spirit assisted. Whether they know it or will accept it or not. Are we together? The first reason why many people never get God's assistance. Over dependence on our ability. Oh, my power, my might. I built this great ministry. I have sons and daughters to show for it. I built so, 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 and so. I'm an intelligent man. Everybody tells me that attitude excludes you will never find the hand of God. That way. Hear what I'm saying. You may not like what I'm saying, but just pay attention. Over dependence on our abilities. When the miracle happens, then we religiously come and say, Lord, I give you glory. But even you, you know, you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done. Not because you were sincere with giving God glory. It's God's will. That I may decrease, that she alone may increase. Huh? All my qualification, all my business acumen, all my parenting skills, all my CEO mentality. When you come before God, you pack those things, box them, and drop them, and glorify His name. It's the reason why many cannot worship Him. Is the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere including a church is the stage apostle joshua selman did you see him as he came did you see how people were running up and down and we stupidly take god out of our ministry you see that yeah that's what a lot of people have done you left seeking god and became a ceo of a church and you started running it by yourself. That's why it's killing you. Let me tell you something with God. One thing I know about God. is not that I'm told. God is a jealous God. I don't know how you want to interpret it. Use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing. God is a jealous God. The jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And we tie, we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that shit to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then, by the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, oh God, God, you, you know, I, I, you said you're a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people. You continue. Listen, when other men are priding in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. Have a testimony of the love and the faithfulness of we together conscious exclusion of God the embarrassment still on that same point the embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of on God the embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped there are many people who like to say nobody helped me 
Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God did that song. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, Son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used a genie to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, Abba, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing. That's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you find out that you never married. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind, they need me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've I mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, Use your power and your might and keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing, I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere out, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I will together. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling that he, he made one million. You see that? It's wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, no, I must get my own one million. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can't have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. HB, if you point someone here and tell him there is a multi-billion naira business in Abuja you want to connect him with, will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I say, which time I will slap you now? Is it not with the money we'll have a time together? Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God becomes something you have to advise yourself to go, it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, 
involve your children in your conviction especially if your children are small as this are one are, are little children are we together don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise they should make noise it's better to make noise in the presence of god than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life let them come and sleep here nobody's complaining I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just acting you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving, I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah Kosatai. I acknowledge you. Listen. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry. Except the Lord builds a family. Except the Lord builds a business. They labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it. They labor in vain. Pouring water in the basket. Pouring water in the basket. It will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket. No miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one. Let's look at the scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31. Verse 1 to 3. Media. Is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31. Verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us. Not like a threat or something. But I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31. From verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's results. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. He said, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis. We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A Habalist is a Habalist. They gave you something. They said during your exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has its way of building a house. The kingdom has its way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has its way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt. And we try to access help. Whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt. There was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. Are we together? I'm not against enlightenment, but some of these, some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God, yet we adopt them and we call it civilization. Please look at me, look at me. Let me have your attention. I don't care. The word of God transcends every generation, whether you are young 
whether you are old there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of God say amen woe to them who go down to Egypt for help you want to build a house you are putting yourself under pressure the world says go to the back and go and collect loan correct go and collect loan and you don't inquire from god you run and go to the bank they give you a loan the next day an arm robber comes and puts a gun and say you better bring out that loan i was in the bank bring everything out and then you have two loans to pay the one you need to build the house and all of that and the journey starts and at the end of your life you have high blood pressure you have stroke the world says if you want to keep a wife beat her beat her once let her see you beat her then she will know you are man enough that's the world's way now you are born again but those advices are still coming once in a while your uncle says that advice i gave you i think he's working are we together the bible says the divine health is a possibility I'm not against medicine and all of that but divine health is a possibility and for you you have never tried to stretch your faith for once to believe God and say I can live here are we together the Bible says favor is possible the world's fashion of favor is bribe and corruption you force it Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate then later on, when it gets to her, they say, okay, let's pray tongues for five minutes. God? Who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've heard preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, ah, I was touched. Ah, ah. See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is clean. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there, some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. Hell is very, very good. So you can be as arrogant as you want to be. And say I'm an atheist. I went to America and I spent two, two years. I went to Harvard. I, uh, that's alright. You are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it will last. But I can tell you one thing. Only a fool will say in his heart. There is no problem. Please hear me. Some of us are parents. And I say all due respect. There are many fathers and there are many mothers, some listening to me by radio. Your family is most diving because as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. 
when your wife is praying you don't say honey make sure you pray for me oh. you just enter the blanket no. no let me challenge any young man here planning to marry if you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry you are in trouble you better catch up join prayer ban on tuesday join. have a personal prayer time and double up and i'm not joking i'm not joking your spirituality defines everything i wish above all things that you prosper even to the degree that your soul prospers what shall it profit a man the bible says if you gain the whole world if you have all the ministries in the world and at the end of it lose your soul praise the lord so there are people seated hearing me you you really need to ask yourself this question um, have i been saved am i born again i know i came for healing i came for a miracle i know i'm 65 years old i know i'm 12 years old are you born again have you really brought jesus to your life an open invitation to say lord i'm tired of mismanaging my life my intelligence is failing me woefully i come to you i come to you as a child will run to his father right the prodigal son came to himself and said look how many hired servants has my father i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me now as one of your servants and the bible says while he saw him coming afar off he ran embraced him kissed him and restored and put back the sin the evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without christ that you took care and drove yourself from Karuna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention two altar calls just carry the lady gently you are here seated listening to me those online pay attention to jesus is calling you the bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest it says take upon me my yoke and learn of me for i am lowly in heart right it says my burden is easy my yoke is light the one you are carrying is killing you two sets of people one those who are saying man of god as you are speaking the holy spirit is telling me i need jesus not i need god not i need god god is many things to many people there is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved god does not save men there is a name jesus jesus are we together this westernization that has made everything called god there are people God is a donkey. There are people God is a tortoise. There are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something. But we are talking about Jesus, the name that is above all names. When he is lifted, then he will draw all men to himself. The second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying, man of God, sincerely, I have responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflows scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here. And say, man of God, I need you to talk to, 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 to pray for me. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are too big, please go back. Two. Come and stand and passionately cry before God. Three. Passionately cry before God. Lord, I've come to you from the depth of my heart. I can't keep playing games with you. Keep coming. Are you running? Leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back. 
There's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out. If your friend holds you back, I assure you there is a spirit. Leave him and run and come. Don't say, I came with my girlfriend. I came with my boyfriend. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Keep clapping, please. Motivate them as they're coming. Man of God, it's as if you've been talking to me. Yes, you are right. You are the one I've been talking to. And Jesus is calling you. Rush to him. Say, Lord, I'm tired. I, I can't keep fighting this for long. I got admission into APU and I became something else. I, I became a graduate and I became something else. I'm not ashamed. I'm coming to you. It is like an award ceremony. You are not closing your eyes. Please run to Jesus. The Lord is still telling me there are people. In the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And stand before him and shame the devil over your destiny. Shame the devil over your destiny. Listen, many of us standing here are young people. One day you are going to be a father. One day you are going to be a mother. The father and the mother you hate right now that made you got into your lifestyle. They had an opportunity when they were young. They ignored Jesus but embraced education. So they became graduates without Christ. And they married without Christ. Although the wedding was done in the church. And the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family. The average young man seated here, in the next 5 to 10 years he will be married. Your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home. Every stupid man today was a stupid young man. Correct? He married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home. We are sick and tired of a godless society. A society that has no respect for God. We, we are pushing God out and saying, look, look, you know, I'm, I'm too fine for all this, this church thing. No. Addiction is the trend. Addiction for God. Outspoken addiction. Listen, I salute you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard. Nobody's money is a thing of joy. I'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life. There are many of you years after now you will be leading others. Ladies, you are standing here for the sake of your children. One day they will look at you and say, Mommy, thank you for giving your life to Jesus when you were 21. Thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears. There's no magic about a great future. You must run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain. And for those of us who are sitting down, that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here. But while you are seated, you must say, Lord, make me serious with you. An addiction for you. An addiction for you. An addiction for you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Yeah. I'm not here to condemn you. No, no. With all the love in my heart, if I had my way, I would hold every one of you. Because you have made a decision that will save a generation. Everyone who rejects Christ has implicated his generation. Because you can only give what you have. Those of you in front, please lift your right hand seriously. Lift it high to the heavens. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Please say it from your heart. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Don't worry, you can cry, it's alright. Lord Jesus. Young lady, look at me. Look at me. I love you. There is a boy that disturbs you. Eh? Send that boy a text and say, Joshua Selman asks you to send him a text. You never come near you again. Because you love God and God wants to use you. Hmm? You keep loving God and that boy keeps, I don't know who he is. Drive him far from your life. Tell him I said so. In Jesus' name. Huh? So you pray that prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart this night I have had your word and I come to you asking you to forgive me asking you to cleanse me I believe I can be better than I am now so I don't fight you again come into my heart it belongs to you take everything that is mine and make it yours. Use me 
for your glory. Every condemnation, every guilt upon my life lives now and forever in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. Father, look at the ones you died for. They have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life and from today, the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life. And I release grace upon you to invite others into your life. I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you. And don't favor the cause of the kingdom. May today be your party with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly and you'll be back. Two instructions please listen. One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking and we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details, your name and your number and whatever information. We need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up. Number two, and please let this be an announcement to the whole house. As a general rule, every time you are born again, the moment you are born again, automatically, you are a member of the prayer department for one month. Automatically. Are we together? When you are born again, so that for those of us who brought them now, if any of your loved ones is among the people, you encourage them. Automatically, for the next one month, you are a member of the prayer department. It's a model we have used from the onset of this ministry. When people get born again, the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community. Once they have a community of like-minded people that love God, they will have the strength to be able to shake up the things that are limitations. But if you leave them alone, sooner or later, the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back. Are we together now? So please, the prayer department, four to six at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get to your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk understand spiritual things and then from there your growth continues the lord bless you in the name of jesus please go ahead and follow the lady this you should create multiple points for them I appreciate them everyone if i told you receive your job you will clap with all your heart keep clapping till they go Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. Is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to God's principles will be very fast please just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to God's principles Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ignorance and disobedience to God's principles write one more scripture Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 we may not have time just write them you can go and read them during your personal time with God 
ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Look up please. You know that one of the mandates that God has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom. I am, I am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives. So ignorance and disobedience is very costly. Number three, please quickly. Number three. The third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the Bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the condition to experience the the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did I offend though? I didn't offend it. I left the village peacefully. Look, he said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Do you know the meaning of that? I was never given an opportunity to choose whether I want the devil to oppress me or not. The moment you are born, that reality implicates you. At once. Do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your christian life and every part of your christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone unturned to see that it destroys you. John 10.10 10 says the thief cometh not. But for to steal. To kill and to destroy. He said but I am come. That ye may have life. And that you may have it more abundantly. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Paul himself speaking. He says once and again I desire to come unto you. But Satan hindered us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 but satan hindered us satan can hinder men that's why god puts a miracle service like this to come and break down that that system that he has built over the lives of people i gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and i want to repeat it never consult mediums the occult and so on and so forth for help no never consult mediums listen the occult the dark world all kinds of extraterrestrial astral transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help jesus said i am the door every other person who comes came through the window i am the door i am the door when you come in through the door you are safe you come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. To play the harlot after them. I will even set my face against that soul. And I will cut him from off among his people. People who consult what? Familiar spirits. 
people who consult mediums occultic activities right many of them parading as different things you go to your village you enter one room they say sit down we want to do something for you incisions all around for protection say it's this razor blade anybody that touches you that razor blade will strike you demonic activities they concoct one kind of drink and they tell you take it and recite all kinds of things the bible says whoever does that i personally i will set my face against ah but apostle i've done it already you are welcome to the miracle service that's why you will be delivered that's why you will be set free from all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior to husbands who put their wives all kinds of, of things people have people have arrows in their homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms let's be sincere things you hide under your carpet you are just sitting down you see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals they wake you in the middle of the night all that consult mediums all that consult mediums some persons may be listening to me online let, let me tell you when God convicts you adjust some of us are sincere but our families especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life or automatically you need to be prayed for automatically Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Quickly please. We we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by his grace we made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 and 11. If you are not there just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter pass through the fire. Or who use it divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consultor of mediums. Listen, I'm listening to them. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires, necromancy, transcendental meditation, astral travels, all kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns, this is Africa and I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or they received Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of people. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings, but brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck and the burden shall be destroyed because this is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Do not reject empowerment. Listen, empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing that outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith. Just fear. You want to nod your head and rest in it to the driver just man say driver be careful oh please fear fear makes us suspect everyone you come to someone's house they put food and you look at it i said no they, they put spoon here why is this person this person wants to kill me fear you need an empowerment if you don't say I, i'm old don't be afraid you are now a man no, there's no such thing as a man a man means you have an anointing hello a man means you have what no matter how old you are, gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not of you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die you. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they, as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheesy. What is working? My head. My head. My, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is a powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting. You have something. See that? You make bold claims without the anointing. They visit you in the night. You make bold claims with the anointing. Whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible are thou in thy ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus from tonight, 
some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything. As you are going back to your house, it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying, no more. No more. No more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No, I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you. And find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes and says, everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it in serious. There are some habits people you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand up on your life to help because it's a spirit. Fill me up. Let there be a release of miracles. Make sure you are praying. It's over. I declare it. It's my year of trial. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. I tell you, strange things are already happening inside and outside. This was the instruction the Lord gave me. That at the point this oil touches the head of everyone, then we begin to speak. Dramatic miracles. Dramatic deliverances. Bring them out. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God. Everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil any stranger Kabataya, any covenant every wicked spirit 
manipulating the destiny of anyone I decree and declare right now by the fire of the spirit let there be deliverance right now inside and outside yokes inside and outside I stand upon this oil I stand upon this place I decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation right now in the name of Jesus I command the spirits I command the devils of you go from their lives now of you go from their lives now bring them out lift your hands at the count of three you will shout Jesus my God I see massive deliverance outside massive deliverance outside freedom for people and families at the count of three that's all I want you to do thank you Jesus let there be complete deliverance one two shout it now three Jokes be destroyed Jokes be destroyed every spirit every force every spirit every force every spirit every force every spirit lift your hands the spirits that cause failure that everything you do you don't succeed right now in the name of Jesus I command them to leave you now leave you now leave you now the spirit of failure the spirit of failure the spirit of failure lift your hands my God I want to pray for students because I'm seeing like a blue flame there is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students you are a student here get ready liberty comes to you at the count of three one two three leave them right now leave them right now they are academics oh, they have not been able to pass they have not been able to graduate I command that spirit you must go now you must go now Lift your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out never work out. Now, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression, as I speak now, let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Help them, please. Bad luck. Lift your hands. I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen. Listen, I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands and pray for families not just individuals so the power of God will come upon you for your family I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands every spirit of hardship every spirit of hardship every spirit of hardship 
I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus, I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Saria. She's in Saria. That's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there's a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be faster. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Please look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family, and God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That as my hand comes on both of you. Let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here. Since 29th December. You have been pleading non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request. Did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. Trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, HP. Okay. Pastor Jimmy will be outside. He will be outside with... Um,
Shade, come stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking now. Stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them, Father. Please anoint them as they lay hands on the sick. In the name of Jesus, as they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. You can lay them. They can go outside here, and then in the name of Jesus Christ, as they lay hands on you. Please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, um, Benga. Okay, promise. You can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or, Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, bring her, Mike and promise you can go outside. You, you, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then Pastor Femi, you can join me and then we'll do it in Washington. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is faithful. At Calvary, at Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Over now, Jesus now. is now.
Stretch your hands on this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. If you are still on the healing line, it's not quick for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request, yes. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we decree and declare. We decree and declare supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? I say it again, between now and miracle service February, return with dear some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life, your finances, your health, your family, may the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus, Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray this under your life. Hard life, the life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. The kind of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus. Some of you, beginning from tomorrow, you will begin to see it. Believe what I'm saying. You will begin to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what recurrent event happens in your life. While you think you have escaped it, it happens again. I'm prophesying to you. It comes to an end right now. In this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension, I pray, may the favor that God has put upon this ministry, I transfer it strangely to your life. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it right now. It begins to help her, please. My God, receive it right now. I release that favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Men helping you. Strength favor. Women helping you. Believe it. Strength favor. Enemies helping you. Critics helping you. Mysteriously. I decree and declare whatever has refused to walk in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work I command it to begin to work now I command it to begin to work now ladies I pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory. You are great, you are virtuous, but glory covered. I declare that from this miracle service, an unfailing of your glory, an unfailing of your glory. I want to pray for everybody, but specifically for our brothers. One of the blessings of this year, is that God will bless your hands. If you don't believe it, just keep quiet. Don't criticize. Just keep quiet. But for as many who are trusting God, that God will establish you as a man, I prophesy to you, receive that unction. Receive that unction. The unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes, to be ready to be a man indeed. Ta, 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 ta. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Lift your hands and see pray. Some of us are victims of foolishness. Therefore, I pray for you. The spirit of wisdom be baptized with it right now. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. I don't know what you have lost, but this is January. God has declared that it's a year of trial. Therefore, I command, between now and next miracle service, receive double restoration. Double restoration. Double restoration. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you for speed. See, let me tell you something. When speed comes into your life, when speed comes into your life, you will be surprised that within a short time, you will catch up and do a lot of things. I prophesy to you, where they have overtaken you, something comes on your life this night. Run like Elijah. Pursue. Kaparete kata. Pursue. Overtake. Recover all without fail. I prophesy. Pursue, overtake, recover all. Two more prophecies, and we are done. I don't know what distracted you from loving God. You were not like that. Your prayer life was a priority. Your word life was a priority, but something feared you off. I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the cause of spiritual laziness. Laziness to wake up and pray. Laziness to fast. Laziness to study. I break it from your life in the name of Jesus. And 
I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret, but the result has refused to manifest. According to the word, when you do things in secret, God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying, oh, and this is from my spirit. I know you have been tightened, but there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimonies, open proofs, open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Anyone on your job here and you are having cases with your superiors, I'm praying for you now. Beginning from Monday, I change their hearts towards you. Whenever they are looking for men to promote, may you be the one for the recommendation. And anyone here called jobless, who is interested in a job or your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care whether you apply or not, may the God of heaven orchestrate favor to your life. Every businessman here, every businesswoman, I command it to work for you. Help them. I command it. Ah, no, no, no. I have that anointing. Oh, that one God gave me. I release it for you. Let it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. Access to men you do not know. Access to their resources. Access to favor from them. As you sleep in the night, may the God that I serve show you secrets in your dream. That you will wake up jumping and smiling. You will wake up rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ. honor that God has placed by grace upon this house. I pray you are part of what God is doing and there's no reason why you should not partake of it. You have honored me. You have honored God. I compel that anyone that looks at your eyes, except you don't have eyes, but that they can look at your eyes. I compel favor from them to you. <laughs> Bible says Esther obtained favor from anyone who saw her. Not talk to her. They just see you and rise up to help you. May the God that I serve make it happen for you. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season. It is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 